Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some emulation on the Oculus Quest 2. Now, I've actually been wanting to do this for a while, but uh, unfortunately the built-in screen capture wasn't working with side-loaded apps, and even if I was to cast this, it would just go to a black screen. But with the latest updates, we're actually able to capture the screen on this pretty easily, and we're even going to be testing out some PS2 using EtherSX2, because after all, this is running Android. And don't worry, I will turn off the head tracking when we get into emulation just to make it a little easier to look at. I completely understand how it is. But in this video, we're going to be testing out some GameCube, we'll go with some N64, some PSP, and some PS2. So with all of the emulators we're going to be testing in this video, I just side-loaded them from SideQuest. Great application. But one thing that I've noticed is with some of the higher-end stuff, we can't access a file browser from within the application. If you have an extra file browser installed, you can actually just choose your game, but you can't populate your game list inside of the app. So if we wanted to run Soul Calibur 2, I can choose it from here. And I'm just using an application called File Browser Plus. This was just an APK I downloaded and sideloaded it on the Quest. So this method here is working for the Dolphin emulator, and if you wanted to go with something like uh, PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, the built-in file browser in that application works with this, so we can access all of the files on the Quest, so we don't need any other application with that. But that brings me over to EtherSX2, PS2 emulator. Does work on this unit, but we cannot get file access. So if I click here, it's going to give me a prompt, no app can perform that task because this application doesn't use any permissions. It does have a spot for the default bio, so I can place it in the correct location. I don't have to select it. It's there. We can boot it up. But when it comes to games, we can't populate a games list. And the only way to launch a game is over ADB. You can do it over Wi-Fi or USB. But most of the other applications that I've tested, except for Dolphin and EtherSX2, have their file manager built in. Like PPSSPP, we can access the Quest 2 internal storage, that way we can basically put our games anywhere on the unit. Same thing with RetroArch, we do have access to the internal storage, so it's really easy to use these two applications. And we can also pair a controller with the Quest 2. So what I have here is an Xbox One controller just paired up over Bluetooth, and it does work with these applications. Some of them I had to go in and map it, most of them it just worked right off the bat. Alright, so we're starting off light here with some N64. I'm using RetroArch with the Moopin Core. We have GoldenEye 007, and it runs really well. FPS is on screen, we're at 60. The sound might be off a little bit in this recording, because I actually had to rig up a setup to record the built-in speaker on the headset and then kind of splice them together, because with these side-loaded apps, I just cannot record audio with the built-in screen recorder or casting. But this is still going to give us a really good idea of how emulation performs on this device. And when it comes to N64, get an amazing performance. Same thing with PSP. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan Backend, Chains of Olympus, 2x resolution, and I probably could have taken it up a little more, but I still think it looks good. We're at 60 with this one. So when it comes to the harder to emulate PSP games, it's also got you covered. And anything below these, it's going to work out just fine. With Dreamcast, unfortunately I couldn't get ReDream to work. You will have to use RetroArch for now, but you should get really good performance. So let's take it up a bit to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. I'm using the development build from their website. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not exactly sure which version it is, but it's a later version as of making this video. It's not bad, but you know, going into this, I was hoping that we'd be able to run at least this game at 60 FPS. I'm using the OpenGL back in, and that's because when I swap over to Vulcan, I'm getting worse performance, at least with this game here. Now, I did test some other games that actually ran really well, like Time Splitters 2. And here we are, using the Vulcan back in. I pretty much got the same performance from Vulcan and OpenGL with this one, but uh, this is a game that is fully playable. Got that FPS up in the top right hand corner, and performance with this is really, really good, as you can see. So yeah, there are some GameCube games that you can play on the Quest 2 with no issues at all. I also tested Wind Waker, one of those games that runs at 30, and it runs flawlessly on this device. But one I always like to test is one of my favorite racing games, and that's Automotalista. With this, I did swap back over to the OpenGL back end, and unfortunately, you just can't get that steady 60 out of it. I mean, it's doing a great job. It's trying its hardest, but there are some dips when there's lots of effects on screen and kind of a pile up of cars. I did see it drop into the 40s. Was really hoping for better performance out of this, but it's just not going to cut it right now. 
So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Ether SX2 does run on the Quest 2, but you kind of got to launch the games over ADB. I've got three to test here, and I wasn't getting the best performance out of this. There is some tweaking that I need to do, but just note that all of these games here are running in safe mode. They're not in unsafe, and I don't have any little hacks going on. And another thing I noticed with this is the Vulcan backend crashes way more than OpenGL, so we're going to stick with OpenGL with all of these games with the native PlayStation 2 resolution, and this is definitely an easier one to emulate. Wrath of Cortex. Not bad, but you get some dips like most of the other stuff we're going to test out here. But I was really surprised to see that we were at least able to get some of these games up and running. Now it does take ADB as of making this video, hopefully the developer does fix this with kind of a built-in file manager, but then you will have to add permissions to the app, and that's one thing they didn't want to do. When you try to add your game directory, it just pops up and say there's no apps that can perform this task, so ADB is kind of the way to go, and it's a bit of a pain to get these games up and running. And the final game I tested here was Gran Turismo 4. Unfortunately, I don't have any sound for this one. I forgot to hit record on the other device, but uh, it's not running at full speed. I also went back and tried to test this with a few hacks running. I also tested Vulcan, and it's just not going to cut it, at least right now on the Quest 2. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I will have a couple more videos coming with the Quest 2 and emulation. I kind of just got to get the hang of how to record this screen a little better. Now that we do have that built-in screen recorder working with third-party apps, it's going to be much easier. But sound is the issue right now. If there's any other emulators or retro games you want to see running on the Quest 2, let me know what they are in the comments below, and I'll make sure to add them to the next one. If you have any questions, you know where to leave them. And like always, thanks for watching.